ProWrestlingSheet.com Welcome everybody to this week's edition of Collider Body Slam Raw Recap Slash Super Showdown Thoughts uh, show that we're going to do today. I am one of your hosts, as always, John Roca, joined by uh, the CEO of the Pro Wrestling Sheet over there. Ryan Satin, how are you, brother? I'm doing great. I yeah. think that, um, you know, Super Showdown wasn't like, I don't know if it was like the best show. Right. But I feel like Raw last night kind of wiped it all away. Woo! You know, Raw last night was probably the best Raw all year so Months. far. I mean, it was... We've been for the past weeks. We've yeah. been lamenting on here about how much we haven't enjoyed Raw and yeah, how yeah, yeah. Oh, man it's like a chore to get through. Um, and I, I, maybe yeah, I guess like past like month or so, we've been talking about that. And yeah, this was definitely a, a saving grace on Raw. It was very nice. Um, but I can't help but think the whole time while we were watching, I was thinking like, like this was definitely like Raw. Presented by the Saudi Sporty Saudi General Sports Authority, <laughs> okay. you know, because it's like we've got Shawn Michaels back, right? We've got Triple H, we've got storylines revolving the Undertaker, we've got Kurt Angle, we've got right. you know, we've got like you know John Cena vignettes. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're literally thrown out there their greatest hits. I mean, it was very yeah. reminiscent of almost a WrestleMania build where yeah. they're starting to throw out you know all their heavy hitters. They got Trish, we got Lita, yeah, um, we got lots of stuff going on. Yeah. A very entertaining show. I got shit on Twitter when I said I enjoyed the show. Everyone's like, so so many people were writing me of just like, what show were you watching? And uh, for Raw like, or for Showdown? Is, have you for Raw? What? Have you cast your WWE check yet? And I'm like, what are you talking about? This was a if you watched this show and yeah. you didn't enjoy it, you probably don't enjoy WWE programming yeah. because this was like their greatest hits. Mm -hmm. It was lots of good stuff, uh, fun segments all around. Yeah, and. You know, if you if you skipped Super Showdown, you really got to see the only things that mattered, kind of. Right. <laughs> like you got to see, you know, you got to see what mattered. So yeah, yeah. I I, uh, I really liked the episode. Yeah, do you want to say anything about Super Showdown before we jump into it? Before we jump into the raw episode? I mean, I think. Did anything stand out for you? How about that? In a positive way? Yes. Because everything, most of it is pretty negative for me. <laughs> I would say the positive is only Samoa Joe and AJ. Great match. Great match. Very much enjoyed that match. Yeah, and I didn't mind the Becky Lynch Charlotte match. I, I wanted more, but I didn't mind it. I liked the tag match. The the sorry, I should be more uh, specific. Specific. The, the the bar versus New Day. Okay, I you didn't that. like that match? Uh, no, I did like. That yeah, match. I liked that it was match. Over quicker than I was hoping. Yeah, I when I was watching it though, <laughs> and now I know why Roka has that face. Because when I was watching it and I saw the iconic uh, beat Naomi and Asuka, uh, I literally I could I could hear John Roca screaming from wherever he lives away from me. I heard I could feel the steam rising from his head. Yeah. I'm just like, no, no, <laughs> why, why? I could just, I was just like, oh man, I know Roca's gonna be so mad. Honestly, I, I, I think Roca's been so mad about this. He hasn't told me that he's been mad. He's been waiting yeah. to say something. It's been ter It was terrible. It was a <laughs> terrible, terrible match. It was a terrible, terrible match. But just timing wise, all like Oscar and Naomi have to carry those two. It was fucking heartbreaking to watch, and it was terrible. I get it. You got to put them over. They're Australian. It's a dream come true to walk down the aisle in Australia as female wrestlers. I totally respect the moment, right? It's awesome to do that. But then put on a damn good match. You did the same thing you do every week. Blown blown spots or overdone uh, things and, and it just was frustrating to watch overall. And Asuka and Naomi had to carry you and then the double double team they did and we had to believe that Asuka could actually be taken out by the Iconics. You didn't like that double team move? I did. I, I mean, I like the double team Yes, I did actually okay. like the double team move. I will actually give credit where credit is due. I like the double team move but overall, just to get to it was such a slog. And so it was like, it just, just I mean, if you me to no end, and I was hoping they would do something better throughout this whole pay per view, but in the long run, they didn't. And I, I, I've been reading people who, who said they enjoyed the Undertaker Brothers of Destruction now setting up the tag team match with Triple H and Sean. I'm like, I don't see how you can enjoy that. That that match was tough to watch, bro. It was like watching old Hogan and old Flair, and I was like, huh. like I don't mind watching it because it's like a filler match in a, a in a in a, a Raw or SmackDown or Nitro or something. But to throw it this match into as as your like premier marquee main, main event, event match, yeah. it was like tough to and not, it, look, 
Both Triple both Paul and Mark can kick the shit out of me, so I'm not trying to say anything negative. Well, and about I think the match was like oh, two old men doing well, their greatest hits. And I don't think either of us mean any disrespect to them, no. but like it wasn't an entertaining match. It wasn't something that people wanted to see in 2018, mm-hmm. it, and they didn't. They didn't. I think that the expectations were very low. Yeah, and they did not succeed those expectations. No. Exceed those expectations. One bit. Yeah. Um, every trick in the book was thrown out there. Yep. The um, sledgehammer showed up. Yeah. The whole the, the, all the things that you expected. Um, but it just, including the thing that you expected most, the match was going to suck. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. Like, Absolutely. And, 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 that, and that was a bummer to me because I was, you know, hoping that maybe they would, uh, they would, tr- you know, they, they, they change our opinion. They did. They, yeah. they live up to their, their, yeah. you know, their level of talent, you know, but it's, you know, we said it on Wrestling Sheet Radio this week. You know, yeah. there, there's a reason why throughout history, when a when a legendary wrestler of, the, of yesteryear comes back, there's a reason you put them with a younger talent. Right. There's a reason for it, yeah. and and this match showed what that reason was. I yeah. mean, these are two older dudes going for 30 minutes in a main event in 2018 yeah. when their prime was a long time ago. I mean, right. Undertaker. Arguably should have been done f- five years ago, like we were talking about on Wrestling Sheet Radio, like yeah. when the streak ended. Yeah. You know, I mean, that should have really been the end of it. So it's rough. Yeah. I will say though that, in my opinion, at least, sure, sure. Uh, as much as we felt this way about the match, mm-hmm. as much as most people felt this way about the match, yeah. In my opinion, the pr- the DX promo to kick off Raw. Made you forget about Great it all segue. kind of Great almost. segue. You say they threw everything in here. I thought for sure at the end we would see the rest of DX show up and then Paul Bearer come back from the dead. That's what I expected <laughs> to see at the end of Super Showdown. But in lieu of that... Paul we, Bearer hologram? The hologram Ooh, would be that'd great. Be cool. That would be awesome. They should do that. Oh, my God. A Paul Bearer hologram would be like awesome. Like Tupac style? Oh, right man. At the, right at the ramp? At the top of the ramp? Oh. Oh, that'd be so cool. And it's actually his son dressed as him. Oh, uh, awesome. That would be brilliant. Uh, but we did. You're right. We did get a fantastic promo to open Raw with... Uh, they have the money for Crown Jewel. <laughs> they really have the money for Crown Jewel to spend on a Paul Bear hologram. I know we've only got a little bit of time left, but... Yeah. I, I'm, I'm cutting this clip, and I'm putting it on Twitter <laughs> Done. just so that I can get the word out that we that about the Paul Bear hologram. It's a great idea. <laughs> uh, it would be awesome. Uh, the, this, uh, this good promo to start off is just a great freaking promo. These guys went back. If they couldn't bring the match back in time, they certainly bought a promo, went back in time for it, and did a fantastic back and forth. Did all the DX catchphrases, but damn if they didn't sound perfectly timed when they dropped all the things they were talking about, you know, Triple H talking about spending 25 years climbing up the ladder, now realizing that what's the point of the mountain, which is an interesting uh, new way to approach this promo thing. So he says, respect is dead. And then he bitches Sean out for having been on the sideline for eight years. Like, what's your problem, dude? And he's like, wait, what? I'm over here taking care of my family, son. And so it was a whole thing that uh, that I enjoyed thoroughly. What would you like about this, man? Uh, yeah, just like you said, you know, I the intensity they brought to mm. it, you know, I think a lot of times in the past when we've gotten a DX reunion, yeah. we've gotten jokey glow stick DX. Yes. We've gotten like fart jokes and, mm-hmm. and, and wiener Sean stick. Sean running around the ring. Sean doing yeah. his fun little jokey yeah. thing. You know, I, I liked that. We, it, it almost felt like the DX of 97. Yeah, man. Of that, of that attitude. Yeah. Because I know it's hard to do an anti-authority gimmick group stable right. when you are the authority. So it's it, it it is a confusing thing, but even yeah. like the shirts where it said like established in 1997 on it, yeah. like it made you feel like no, you're not getting that jokey DX you've seen in the past few years. Right. You're getting like the fucking pissed off, tough ass kickers that also have a little bit of an edge to them, and and yeah. and, and I'm interested to see I'm interested to see how their next entrance is as a team because mm-hmm. on Raw they came out separately, yeah, and. Then they did the lead in to DX reunion, mm-hmm. even though it was like the most obvious thing that's been coming for for weeks. Um, it was still awesome when he did the like, you know, because they didn't give you DX right away. It was like Triple H and Shawn Michaels, yeah. and they come in and they're both doing their thing. They're talking about respect, uh, Shawn being on the sidelines, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, but when he did the, like the, the the you know, I got three words or whatever. Yeah, like the, yeah. Are you ready? You know, it was like. Oh yeah, that's cool, you know. And then when the, when he did the whole thing, and then it you know went into the music, it was like, oh, all right, yeah, like I like, the, you yeah. know, this is this is these are these are tough dudes. I like this. It wasn't a joke. And so I'm interested to see when they come out next. Yeah, 
if we go back to getting like the glow stick, Sean doing the jokey stick, like I'm, yeah. I'm interested to see if they stick with this or if it's like a nostalgia thing just for fun and it's not as serious as it felt in this. But I, yeah. I think because Shawn Michaels ha- was so openly, Shawn Michaels has clearly known about this for a while. Yeah. Shawn Michaels has clearly been preparing for this because the interview he did months ago now, yeah, I want to yeah, yeah. say, he straight up said, you know, if I come back, it'll probably be in a tag match with Triple H, <laughs> and it'll like, you know, it'll probably not be what you're thinking. It's gonna be like that, blah blah, but it's got to be the right thing. It's got to right. be done right, blah blah. So he still stuck his word to that, right? And I feel like Shawn Michaels, it, I feel like Shawn Michaels won't come back in a jokey way, no, because it will be shitty if he comes back and it's like a jokey thing. It's got to be like tough Shawn Michaels yeah. in order for this to be a sell, an actual believable main event, in right. my opinion, right? I agree. I agree. It's not going to be Shawn Michaels versus Hogan again. It's not going to be that kind of thing. It's got to be full on committed Shawn. And you want to see that. And I think the Brothers of Destruction now, Kane and uh, Taker, the gauntlet's been thrown down promo wise. What are these guys going to come back with that are going to come close to what DX did? You know? That's and tough. so that's good. Yeah, exactly. You set the table, the bar pretty high on this one. What do they have to come back with? Because you know they're going to respond. And it'll be, what, next week or something like that? So that, that I look forward to seeing that. You know what's funny about your hate with Shawn Michaels? Is I, don't hate Sean I always thought that Sean was totally in the right during his feud with, with Hulk Hogan. <laughs> I knew you were gonna be saying I've been waiting to say that for like since we started, since I've learned of his hate for Sean Michael, especially during that during that feud. Ugh. Um yeah, I remember thinking like, yeah, Sean Michael should go over screw Hulk Hogan mm-hmm. or whatever. And mm-hmm. I was like, I remember thinking he was totally in the right during the time, but also I'm like such a big DX mark and yeah. and, 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 and you're such a big Hulk Hogan a mark. Big NWO mark. And, yeah, and I'm such a big like DX mark, yeah. Hulk, Shawn Michaels mark, that I think that that's where our true intentions <laughs> lie. Like I don't think either of us are right. Yeah, I think yeah. both of us are just standing hard for our favorites. Yeah, damn right, damn right. <laughs> I'll always defend NWO over DX uh, a thousand times. Although I think Shawn Michaels hates me, so I shouldn't. Does sh- he really? I, I shouldn't stand What's he mad right? about now? What do you mad about now? Oh man, I did. I, I think it's from some stories I wrote. I, lessons learned. Lessons learned. Okay, all right. Well, yeah, because Sean's never done anything wrong to anybody. <laughs> Sean's know, ever, never said the wrong word to anybody or been inappropriate to anybody. He's supposed to be a or, forgiving person, Sean Michaels. Yeah. What, what's that cross for if it ain't for forgiveness? For Forgive God's me, sakes. man. I'm a yeah. big fan. It's easy to forget friends, Sean. Unblock me. <laughs> Is he block you? What? Maybe you should put some hair on his head. Bob right. Strowman blocked me too, and I'm also his like biggest Ooh, fan. Strowman. I know. What'd you write? That one was because Just that guess. one was because of the Karen Jarrett thing between him and her and Braun Strowman like yeah. a year ago, where I said that nothing happened. And then all of a sudden I was blocked. I think he literally wow. just read a headline and didn't click further. He's like, oh fuck that guy blocked. And I was saying, I was saying it wasn't a big deal. Wow. Still love Ron Strowman, whatever. Oh, Get well, these hands. Fine. Get these hands. <laughs> Someone who got these hands. Bobby Lashley with Kevin Owens. Bobby Lashley, dude, this was a great heel yeah, turn. Yeah. No, this was a weird segment, though, in I, terms I, I, of just, like, where did any of this come from? Yeah, because I thought they were building him up as a face with yeah. Leo Rush. And it was, like, cool. And even Bobby was smiling through his promos with Leo. And then out of nowhere, and it wasn't like uh, Owens was being uh, propped up as some kind of face. Not yeah, not he at was all. doing little things with Elias that were kind of undercutting Elias, but it was standard Ke- Kevin Owens stuff. That's why, okay, I loved the segment. I enjoyed yeah. it thoroughly. Fantastic. Fantastic, like you said. Yeah. But, you know, Christian Harloff, yeah. who does Collider Live, works here at Collider. Big wrestling uh, fan. Big wrestling fan. <laughs> he and I were just talking about it. He was he watched Raw last night. He was talking about how much he, lo- how much he loved Raw last yeah. night. And he was like, you know, I've, I've missed the past couple of weeks, but. Did I not see something with like Bobby Lashley turning heel or Kevin Owens turning face? Like I liked the segment; it was really entertaining. But right. like, did I miss part of the puzzle? And I was like, no. Yeah. We everyone was kind of confused as to what happened. But I will say this much: I think that collectively, yeah. Prior to Leo Rush uh, becoming Bobby Lashley's manager, I think collectively everybody was on board saying. Bobby Lashley needs to turn heel. Yeah. It is an, a necessary part of this situation. Um, and, you know, I, I know that Leo and and Lashley as a unit were getting over. Yeah. But I still think this is the best decision. I really think in terms of long term. Yep. Oh, yeah. Bobby Lashley as a heel yes. with Leo Rush as his shitty, fast-talking manager is perfect. He's a more natural heel. He's just a more natural heel. Nobody buys Bobby when he smiles. It looks weird. Same thing with Ronda, which we'll get to. Whenever Ronda smiles, it's weird. It looks fake as fuck. And when you see 
Lashley doing his thing. You see, when Ronda gets the angry face, that's the scary face. Mm-hmm. When you see Lashley go heel and he's so like vicious and brutal, it's beautiful. Man, yep. The fact that he kept slamming Owens' leg against the post, that's great. And then you solve a problem for Owens too, which is that you didn't know where you were going to put him. Now he can be a, a, like a, a, a guy for the people. Like he can fight for the people. People love Owens for that because he feels like one of them. You know, he's not in the best shape. He's not, but he's a great fighter and he fights long times. So his his body betrays his actual cardio, his actual abilities. You know, him and Samoa, those guys ain't like shaped with, you know, six packs. But those guys can fight for days. And so you love that, and people want to cheer for them. So that makes sense. And of course, you bring another big heel into Raw. Bobby Lashley. They were kind of bereft of heels, really big heels, because Strowman and Ziggler and McIntyre are caught up on this other thing. So now you've got a singular heel kind of roaming around, and it works with with that, with uh, Bobby Lashley. Yeah, they're even rolling into other people's promo time, like yeah. in the backstage segment, and being like, why are you talking to these people? Yeah. Like, you should be talking to us. Like, we're all people care about, which was great. <laughs> um, I completely agree with everything you said right yeah. there, though. I think that you, you nailed it all. Um, I, I'm, okay, so a few weeks ago, Kevin Owens quit. Yeah. Quit. Supposedly quit. Quit Raw. Right. Then it seemed like they abandoned it out of nowhere, seemingly to put him on Mixed Match Challenge. Yeah. Which was weird because it was like, like there... I just feel like there could have been anyone else that fa- that fit in that position. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think they were only off like one episode too, and yeah. then they brought him back for that like one episode. Then then he was right back to like the position he was in before, yeah, yeah. and now after the show, WWE did. Uh, an article w.com where they basically they it seems to be in cafe but yeah. but where uh it, they claim that like Kevin Owens uh both of his knees are injured so it seems like once again they're doing something to write him off you know like yeah. they're getting him off TV and I'm almost wondering if they had Lashley do it mm-hmm. because now Lashley injured both Owens and Sami Zayn yeah um, oh, and you had mentioned yes that you thought maybe they'd come back together yeah. or something like that. So you know what? I've been I've really really been thinking about it, and I'm wondering almost mm. if because look, it, Kevin Owens needs some time off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kevin Owens is a great performer, one of the most talented people on the show, but he has been what's the word I'm looking for? Like over you, like he yeah. he's been. Not overused. That's the bad, that's a bad way of word. Getting saturated. It's yeah, maybe. It's, I feel like they, for the past few months, they, yeah. they used Kevin Owens for months. Yeah. To get Braun Strowman over as a face. Yeah. Braun Strowman over as a good guy to get the cheers, the porta potty. But they did a lot of it at Kevin Owens' expense. Yes. Then right when it was over, they turned Braun Strowman heel. Yeah. Making everything Kevin Owens did to get Braun Strowman over as a face. They rendered it all pointless yeah. by turning Braun Strowman heel right away. I would like to have been in the room when, when they told Kevin that. Right? When Kevin saw it, like, Kevin's but like, what was I doing all this for the past? Why did I do all of that for yeah, the yeah, past yeah. few months? You I know? can only imagine. So I feel like it would be best for his character to get a refresh. And I we, yeah. we, we discussed this uh, times. big time when yeah. he quit. Mm-hmm. Quit. And then we were both bummed afterwards. Right. I'm hoping they use this as a way to, like, Get him off TV for a minute, make you not think about him, yeah. and bring him and Sammy back when Sammy's healthy in almost like an outsider's like way. Yeah. And let them be the anti hero that Becky Lynch is on SmackDown too, where like they, because there's this role that I feel like isn't being filled right now. Mm-hmm. And that's like the CM Punk role, yeah. Of like the guy, all the indie people can get behind, yeah. All the indie fans can get behind, yeah. uh, And and I know that there's like you know there's Seth Rollins and and stuff like that, but I don't think there's like that one guy that they can identify with. And mm-hmm. Kevin Owens was that guy, yeah. And he's kind of moved. They've moved. They haven't. They've moved him away from that. And yeah. I think that he has the potential to be the next Stone Cold CM Punk like antihero. And I hope. Hope, hope that that's what they do here. Yeah, but he'll probably be back next week in <laughs> in, in knee braces or something, and yeah. we discuss this for nothing. Because now he's got to put over Bobby Lashley as a heel, probably. God damn. But I will say, but I, my my, cynic, my my cynicism aside, yeah, this segment was awesome. Yeah, it was I, great. I, I Bobby Lashley as a heel seems like money. Money, money, and I, I'm very excited to see where they go with it now. You know, it's mind blowing to me, and I know we, I know we have to move on to these matches because it's a long show. But like, why do heels push less merch than he face? That's fascinating to me. Even in this, well, day because and age. like they don't. It's because like they don't want 
Yeah, they're just not supposed to because it's like they're you're not supposed to like cheer for them. So like if you're wearing their merch, it gives you a reason to like cheer for them. Like you're behind them. <sighs> I feel like in 2018, that's a like a dead thing. Me too. In, in my opinion, I've I mean, always felt that way too. Vader shirts all over the place. I've know? always thought it was a dumb concept yeah. myself too. I know like Chris Jericho is like that guy who sticks to it hardcore. Right, right. And I think I think it's dumb too. Yeah, yeah. I would I would, I would end up you any time of the end. I don't care. <laughs> Uh, all right, well, uh, speaking of a shirt I'm not going to buy, uh, Ronda Rousey, she took, her and the Bella Twins took on the Riot Squad here, uh, kind of essentially redoing their Super Schmo- Showdown match again. Uh, uh, it was said, cool. <laughs> you said Super Schmodown. I, I, so, sorry about that. Super Showdown match again. Uh, Rousey and the Bellas got the win again. Uh, but uh, Okay, wait, wait, wait. wait, wait. Okay. Before you shit all over this. Shit. I, 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 no, I just, <laughs> uh, you didn't think that I like they stepped it up with the Brie Bella Liv Morgan stuff. Like they really yes, leaned into that was it. Great. They really <laughs> leaned into it this time. Yeah. Having Liv, yeah, it was all great. Yeah, having Liv talk yeah. all that shit, yeah. hit her back, all that kind of stuff. Uh, I very much enjoyed it. I, I tweeted this, and I feel like you're one of the people who probably didn't like it. But I oh. said, look, now we're gonna get to it in a minute. But we yeah. know Nikki versus right. Ronda at, at Evolution. They should totally do Brie Bella versus Liv Morgan Evolution. Oh, yeah. That makes sense. Right? I'd be more down for that. I mean, like, I love when WWE blends reality and fiction. Yeah. And this is one where they might as well. It happened on live TV. It, you yeah. might as well play off of it. It should be a first concussion match. It should be a <laughs> first concussion <laughs> match. No, no. I get in trouble. <laughs> but this is so Okay. So, anyway. Yeah. Uh, Ryan's bearing the lead here. The Bella's turned on. Uh, a freaking um, uh, uh, Ronda, Ronda Rousey right at the end there, which of course made like it's just weird. But of course they're setting this up. What does it come from? It comes from the fact they don't like that these new people come in and taking the shine off of them. Blah blah blah. All that backstage promo in the back with one of the worst lines ever delivered. The Bella Lucian, get the f out of here. That dumb stuff. Um, and then the, the, it was. <laughs> I mean, cheese ball is cheese ball, son. Cheese ball is cheese ball. Well, it's not like they wrote it. <laughs> it's like clearly something Vince handed yeah, them. Yeah, I'm, I'm not bad yeah, yeah. for it. Yeah. For it. It's just a cheese ball thing. Whoever yeah. wrote it, whoever wrote it, Bell Lucian's not the best. Yeah, but this is. I, I They're selling that shirt now too. Are they really? Oh, it Jesus. says it says the Bell Lucian has begun. Of course, <laughs> yeah, they always try to take credit for it. It's funny. Um, you know, it's funny too. I, I don't know. I don't want to get into too much trouble because I know. No, you, go ahead. What? What? I, I've always felt that they were a stopgap. Like they were just like they're like the the Bret Hart. Like between Hogan and Stone Cold, there was Bret Hart. Between the the, the divas at the beginning, Trish Stratus, Lita, all them, the Bellas are the stopgap. And now we have all these great divas now. That with, I mean, all these great wrestlers, female wrestlers now. To me, they've always been the stopgap. Do you not think Bret Hart's a great wrestler? It's not that I don't think he's a great wrestler. It's that or I he wasn't a, a great dynamic champion? personality. It, Hogan. Hogan was a dynamic personality. Stone Cold, The Rock, Triple H, dynamic personalities. In the middle is Bret Hart. It was kind of boring, in my opinion. And I feel like the Bell is a little bit, a little boring for female wrestlers, in my opinion. Yes, they're skilled. Yes, they've got. They're obviously very beautiful. People love them and whatever. And they and they obviously have a great empire. I just have never, for me personally, never felt they were that that incredible. You throw in now uh, Charlotte Flair. You throw in uh, uh, Sasha Banks. Throw in even Bailey, Becky Lynch, and and uh, 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 Alexa Bliss. Though those are now you know. And so to me, that's the lineage. But the fact that Bellas are always saying like, "Oh, we started this women's revolution. We did this. We did that." To me, it's like, ugh, okay. Well, they did play I guess... a big part in that revolution yeah, happening. Sure, sure. They were in the match yeah. that everyone was mad about. Which was the... The whole Give Divas a Chance thing. Oh, right. They were. They were in that Absolute. match that everyone was mad about. They were. They were. And, and that's that's fair. And that's why I, it's my own personal thing, right? They deserve whatever they can get out of this business. Much respect. In my opinion, though, I just I just see them like a Bret Hart stopgap. And I like the other like Yeah, the but I also think at the same time, the like, you couldn't... You can't... As much as you feel that way, you yeah, can't yeah. deny the the effort or the, the legacy of Bret Hart or what he's done for Absolutely the business. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. And if Bret Hart, if and there was a pay per view at that time, totally. That's what I'm yeah. saying. If there was a pay per view at that time, you would get Bret Hart being in the main event still. You right. know? Oh, I get why they're setting it up. Yeah. I get why they're setting up Ronda versus Nikki. It just makes sense. And they kind of put the seeds in when Nikki was like going back and forth to Ronda's showdown about who should start the match. Mm-hmm. That was like kind of that beginning. And even thing. further back when Ronda first signed, right. they were doing the tweets and stuff like that. And look it, we recently talked about this. I yeah. even said, I don't think that this is necessarily the main event that people want to see in yeah. Evolution. You I know, I don't think that it necessarily. Gives the the message they're trying to convey. Yeah. Yeah. That's not to say that I don't think both those wrestlers are great. I think the Bell Twins are great. I think Ronda Rousey is great. Yeah. You know, the more I saw people talking about it, the more it made me t- 
turn a little bit in terms of like, well, you know what, Ronda, or sorry, Nikki does deserve that spot. Like Nikki does deserve to get okay. the spotlight. Like Nikki does deserve to, you know, be involved in the show. Mm -hmm. Do I think that they could have done something better with the main event? I do. I think they could have done maybe like a triple thread or four way person where like they had women from all eras, you know, yeah. like. Ronda for the now, Nikki yeah. for the divas, you know, Alundra Blaze for the past, mm. and like you know, like they could have done something like that where yeah. it wasn't necessarily for the Raw Women's Title. Because I just, I, all around, and we're gonna get to this next part too. I, th I think it comes up soon in the show as well. But like, I just feel like they're kind of, they're not getting their own message with Evolution. Yeah, <laughs> you, am I right I in agree. saying that? Yeah, like. And it seems like they don't know what they want mm -hmm. anymore from Evolution. You know, they, they they teased... It feels like they're still making it up on the fly. Yeah, like they teased Lita versus Alexa Bliss yeah. for weeks. Yeah. And they teased Lita versus Mickey James for weeks. Right. Both were announced not very well. Yeah. And then, out of nowhere, they just changed the match. Yeah. And it was just kind of like, well... What are you guys doing at this event? Like, yeah. like now, so now there's only two matches that are known, or three matches that are known, right? right? I think there's the NXT title. Yeah. Or four matches. There's the NXT, wait. Sha the NXT title. Was it Shayna taking on what, Bianca? Shayna versus Kyrie. The Kyrie, si Kyrie Sane. Sh Charlotte versus Becky. Uh, Charlotte versus Becky. Yeah. Uh, tag match. Right. Nikki versus Ronda. Ronda. Right. That's not like the most exciting card. That's my thing, man. And like that pisses me off because it, it honestly feels like they're setting evolution up to fail. Yep. It feels like that. Like yeah. there's like they're like it, it seems Where's to me Stephanie like now. Right? Like it seems like they're gonna put this on. It's not gonna do well. Which and it's and to me, it's not the fault of the performance, it's the fault of the booking. Absolutely. But that's not how the higher ups are gonna see it. They're gonna right. see it as the women's pay per view couldn't perform. Right. Then a few days later, they're gonna have the Saudi pay per view that makes them forty million dollars or whatever in there. We're gonna be like, Well, which one should we do in the future? Right. You know, you tell us which is a better business decision. Right. You know, and and it's it's frustrating because it feels I like agree. this could be booked so much better if they had put proper mm -hmm. thought into it. Yeah. You I know, agree. a lot of this like like where's Sasha Banks? Yeah. Where is she? Where is where's, Sasha Banks? Where's the boss, for God's sake? You know, like, I know they said she's injured, but are they going to tell us what her injury is? Right. Why would they just keep it a secret when Evolution's right around the corner? If she can't compete, let us know. Yeah. Say something. Yeah, I Why agree. do the girls... I, I don't know. I just... Yeah. This, this, There's I, even really good NXT... I mean, like, why don't you bring in Tony Storm? Why don't you bring in Shayna... Uh, more than Shayna. Why don't you bring in Bianca? Why don't you bring in, like, legitimate fucking female wrestlers that have been kicking ass for the last two years on your programs and on other programs... And bring them in and do an evolution. Well, speaking of, uh, wait, who you just mentioned? Oh, the you, the, the Tony yeah. Storm. Yeah, Tony Storm. They also announced there's going to be an NXT UK Women's Title match, but they haven't even shown yeah. when and the, the match where the someone won the NXT Women's Title or the there NXT UK Women's Title. There you go. What are they doing? Yeah. Like, what are they doing? They said like weeks ago they were going to make an announcement about the NXT. Uh, UK show, right? Where is it? They filmed it. What, what's happening? Like, what's going on? You do, know. So, do, I don't do, know. Do you think there'll be a cheesy battle royal? Oh yeah, most certainly. With like the, all the old lady wrestlers coming in and oh, absolutely, God. absolutely, absolutely, definitely. Yeah, that's. Remember they said there's like 50 performers or like that. Mm. We only know about like 10 of them. <sighs> Maybe not even that. Um, I will say though, I do think that this angle was well done. Like I think. Oh no! Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I want to like stress that because I, I might be frustrated about the the booking of Evolution, yeah, yeah. but I enjoyed this turn. Yeah. Uh, the Battle Twins have, for the most part, been faces on TV since yeah. they've been around. But they're the great past heels. Years. They're great heels. They're always great. Nice heels. seeing them do the loser thing yeah. again. You know, it was nice seeing them as heels. Who you know, people are gonna are start. We're kind of starting to boo them a little bit anyways yeah. because of the Liv Morgan yeah. thing. So. Might as well just lean into it. Screw it. And they really did. And what's fascinating was watching the fans cheer them on. And look, that Chicago crowd was hot. But having them turn on Ronda for not all of them, obviously, but certainly large enough percentage, it was noticeable on television. It was very split. Yeah. And so that tells you Ronda's not maybe not as over as people think she is. Eh, I think but that was I a like Chicago they enjoyed thing. The thing. Oh, well, yeah, it was Chicago. Okay, I think fine. so. All right, we'll let it be there. If it shows up in Wichita, then we've got some issues. I suppose you're right. But I like it. I, it, I think eventually the Ronda face thing is going to rub people. Eventually it's going to rub them the wrong way, and they're going to want her to turn heel. And I think that's no going to happen. No way. You'll see. 
<laughs> You'll see. <laughs> and I'm not usually wrong in a heel turns. Uh, I was. I never thought Cena was ever going to turn. I never. Once he turned from the Doctor Thugonomics to a face, I never ever believed he was going to turn back. You don't think that we might even get it now that it's like he's at the twilight of his career? Nope. Remember The Rock tried that bullshit, tried to go back heel, and it was terrible. True. The Hollywood Rock, it was terrible. Yeah, true. Even true. though I enjoyed that whole promo, the, the uh, opening Titantron with the copter and the slow Which motion. was cool. That was awesome. That was cool. The slow version of the of the Rock theme song was great. Uh, speaking Speaking of battle royals, we had a global battle royal. Uh, we're going to skip that mixed match, but nobody cares about that nope, shit. No, don't care. Global battle royal here, Baron Corbin. All I'm going to say is well, if you have a mixed match challenge show, why are you having mixed match challenge like, yeah. happen on Raw? Yeah. Don't. Yeah. Makes no sense. Just promote it. Baron Corbin, he had that most star studded battle royal ever. <laughs> Loved from this. All these people from different countries. This was akin to watching back when they used to have little people shows. Like they'd have these little people take on the big wrestler, or, you know, like King Kong Bunny would wrestle with little guys. Uh, this felt that way. Of course, Corbin just dispatched everybody. And then you had the conquistador. Or as, uh, 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 is it, who, who does the, uh, jo as JoJo might say, conquistador, for whatever reason she said it like that. <laughs> but, like, uh, it was Kurt Angle doing the weirdest things in the world in very uncomfortable gold, uh, 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 whatever the hell he was wearing. Well, he was the conquistador. Remember the conquistador? <laughs> yeah, I do, but, like, it was uncomfortable. Angle's, like, his balls were dancing. I didn't like it. <laughs> And it was made me uncomfortable. That's all I tell you. It made me uncomfortable. But anyway, he, he posted on Instagram after and said he's gonna role play with his wife as a conquistador when he gets home. And I was like, "Damn, Kurt Angle is a freak. I like it, dude. <laughs> oh, he's a total freak. respect. All those drugs, of course you. <laughs> but him doing the German suplexes, and then he of course did his, uh, his 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 angle slam and got Corbin out of there, and then surprised everybody to the mat. But the, I love how the crowd was slowly realizing who he was as the as the cheers got louder and louder. Then we did the F five. They were like, ah. And then when he pulled the mask off, they went insane. So now it's what, what's going to be Corbin versus uh, Angle now at the at the Crown Jewel. That's thing? my guess. I'm yeah. guessing Corbin's going to be in it. Angle's yeah. going to be in the world. Well, Angle's already in the World Cup. I'm guessing Corbin's going to put himself in the World Cup. Yeah, you know. And, Cena's and then thing, I'm right? guessing maybe like Finn Balor will be the last one or Lashley. Oh, maybe yeah. one yeah. of the two, Finn okay. Balor or Lashley. Um, Did you like this though? I love this. this. To be yeah. honest, with you, I love this. Yeah. I, this was such like an old school classic wrestling like. This is like something that reminds me of my childhood. Like, you know, like all these like stereotypical wrestler names. The very, yeah. I, I, I the know. Claw, that, not the claw. Yeah, they were all just like such cheap or like just cheesy, yeah. stereotypical wrestling characters. That were probably very fun to think of in the back. But oh, I, sure. I laughed. I was cracked. Like the Chilean sea bass or whatever. <laughs> like some of those cracked me up. They were so good. I was, I, I was laughing. So, yeah, I liked it. Um, I think if you're not someone who reads the internet online, like, mm. you know, I try, you know, to avoid. Raw spoilers because yeah. I have to watch show anyways. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, it's, it's a big deal. I can't avoid it. And like that was on so many sites yesterday that just like Kurt Angle's coming back to, you know, Kurt Angle's right. backstage at Raw. So I had a feeling it was him when it started, but I still, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, yeah. Nice little throwback to, you know, the conquistadors who are running WWF, WWE theme. So I, I, I thought it was fun. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. And I, Me too. and, and, Baron Corbin, it was funny the way he, the way it was all set up, yeah. the way it was all done, um, and I like Kurt Angle being back. Yeah, you know, I think that yeah, Kurt, absolutely. Yeah, I think that you know we we haven't seen the Kurt Angle singles match, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. We haven't yet. Like Not we yet. haven't seen it in WWF in forever. Yeah, just him straight up Olympic pyro, all that kind of stuff. We're gonna get it at yeah. at, at at Crown Jewel. I'm imagining. That's, all, that's, my, that's when you spend that money. This is what you want. I swear to God, it's like it's it's so insane. It's like a kid's fantasy. There, I'm gonna pay once I make all this money. I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna do that. Well, it looks like you can. That's why. My God. That's why I tweeted from the wrestling sheet account today, and I said something like, uh, "I had people, you know, if you were Saudi prince with all the money in the world, what would your dream main event be oh, that you I could book yourself?" I should have tweeted that. It's a good one. It's a good one. Yeah. So I had a lot of people that with some good responses. A lot of Sting versus Undertaker. Oh yeah. Austin versus Punk. HBK versus The Rock. Oh, I can see. Oh, HBK vs. Rock would be great. I know. That's a good one. Damn, that's a good one. Um, and then a lot of, like, you know, work great that's guys good. all together and stuff like that. Um, I was Flair and uh, Jericho. Work that shit out. Was Jericho, Do you want to see Flair Jericho right now? Jericho hated Flair. Not right now. No, it's it's now. Oh, it's now. It's as if oh, it's as if you had the money right now, like not okay. in their prime, because okay. the Saudi prince right now, the current, the Saudi General Sports Authority does not have that luxury. So right, I'm not giving right. you that luxury. Not, they don't have a time machine. I know they got okay. a lot of money, but they don't have a time machine. I'd have Shayna versus Trish. I mean, to versus uh, 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 Ronda. That would Shayna be... Baszler versus Ronda. Yeah, title yeah versus but you don't title. need all the money in the world for that. I guess so, but I would like to see that title versus title. <laughs> I'm a very cheap guy, man. <laughs> I'm a very cheap guy, man. <laughs> 
Uh, all right, let's move on. Trish Stratus, uh, she returned to Raw, did a nice little promo here. Mickey James came out, of course, with Alexa. They were talking about like, Alexa's still suffering from that concussion. She's going to be at the AMAs. She tweeted that out to, uh, and put an Instagram story up that she's going to be at the AMA. So if you want to see Alexa at the AMA, I think it was do. an arm injury she suffered. What? It was an arm, arm injury. I thought she had the concussion. Was it arm injury? Okay. You're the president. I, I give it up to you, man. You're the rest of the yeah. shit guy. Okay, arm injury. But she's gonna she wasn't she wasn't sporting anything. So she No, right, but that's right? what WWE said it was was okay. an arm injury. I, they definitely haven't said it was a concussion or anything okay. like that. All right, my bad. Um but uh then Alita came out and joined Trish, so now it's gonna be a tag match. Uh and probably because of her injury and and what have you, they're they're gonna do this thing this way. Um I guess it's okay. Uh it takes away the idea of watching an, like two singles matches now, but I guess it'll be fine. It just like has this. a quick little, like a... Uh, yeah. I, I The reasoning, I've been working on it, about why they mm-hmm. switched I don't know if it's because of the injury. Okay. I don't, I don't know that. I know that's like the general assumption. Yeah. Um, just to correct the situation here for those watching. Um, WWE said it was an arm injury. Right. Um, I don't believe there's been any additional information as to what her actual injury is. Mm. Uh, I'm still working on it. I've tried to get more, but you know, I was talking to people this morning, and it, it did. I, I did have someone say to me that um, that it wasn't because of the injury. Oh. So, but then I had someone else say it was. So I'm oh like, gosh. I'm like, I'm hitting up more and more sources. I'm trying. I'm, I'm honestly trying to figure it out still. Yeah. I, I don't know. Okay. Um, I do think that the bait and switch was kind of weak on WWE's part. Okay. Um, I don't know. If, I mean, like, do you think that that was always their intention, and that they did that because no. because they couldn't say Nikki Bella versus Ronda Rousey yet, but they had tickets on sale, so they needed to they needed to say a match was happening. Maybe as like a placeholder for now, these matches are happening. So but then you, it, you wouldn't Trish feel Stratus? super like disappointed if like, well, we're still seeing all those people. Do you think Trish Stratus versus Alexa was gonna, you know, sell the whole thing out? That's or why. Lita versus that's why Nikki I'm James? wondering. Yeah, like you know, if it was like they knew that wasn't gonna do that, so right. they just kind of put it as a placeholder yeah, there. Yeah, maybe, maybe, but but I don't know. I really don't know. I'm I'm trying to figure it out. Yeah. At the end of the day, though, I think the best decision was made here. I agree. Yeah, I agree. Like really? at the end of the day, I don't want to see those two matches really that that much. Yeah. I yeah. think they're both all they're all best served in a tag match. Yeah. We don't need to see. You know, Trish have to work a full match. We don't need to see Lita work. Yeah, Trish is in great shape. Her yoga. She's she's not someone. Who's and so is Lita. But so I just Lita, don't know like, if necessarily yeah. for the same reason. I don't want to watch Undertaker yeah. and Triple H. Yeah. You know, like yeah. do a full singles match. Now, granted, I said that you know you put them with a younger person that sure. you know to, to take you know that's Alexa. picks up some of the slack. That's Alexa. Um, but also at the same time, like Alexa's not known to put on these like epic technical masterpieces, you know? Like she puts on good, ma- like, fun matches. I like okay. Alexa's match. I like Alexa's matches. All right, good. But she's not putting on, like, these technical masterpieces where she's going to be carrying someone like Trish who hasn't right. wrestled a full match in a decade or right. whatever. That's like, a good point. So I think, I think, in my opinion, the best decision was made here. Yeah, yeah, I agree as well. Uh, same, speaking of a decision that shouldn't have been made, uh, Bobby Roode and Chad Gable took on the Ascension Again, uh, this time uh, we have some dissension between Rude and Gable. Gable get, got himself the pin after he, uh, you know, tagged out with Rude when Rude was looking to finish this thing off. They got the victory, but then the authors of pain came in and absolutely demolished everybody. If this stupid rivalry served any purpose over the last few weeks, it, to put a, the authors of pain over, then it was worth it. Because the authors of pain came in and absolutely destroyed. I have Homie in a better leather jacket, which is a positive. Yeah, if I like. Stay, I like that he's got a green leather yeah, jacket now. That's a better fit. Yeah, it looks a little cooler. Yeah. I like it. It, yeah. it matched. It's like less like he's trying to wear their clothes yeah. and more it's like he's supposed to match. Exactly. He just wants to match his homies. Exactly. This means we'll move farther and farther See, away from Precious Paul coming back. So yeah, that's true. <laughs> so you think that this was. The, the past few weeks, if it led to getting the author pain over more, was wor- was, this was worth it in I, the end of the day? Because I, I, I just don't feel that way. Well, I, okay, but I like that the authors of pain are now back at where they could be in consideration. I just feel like the titles. authors of pain are in the exact same position they were in a few weeks ago. Oh, I think they're going to take on the revival next and then they'll move into the tag team uh, picture. Absolutely. Those guys are going to go for the titles, man. You don't give them this much of a rub, I don't think, and then bury them again. You that think they're no going to do heel versus heel? Authors of pain versus. Drew and Dolph? Oh, that's a good question. See, I that's been my problem this whole time. Honestly, hmm. the booking of hmm. The Ascension, that's Bobby Roode, Chad Gable, and The Authors of Pain has been so incredibly yeah, confusing. Yeah. Let's take away Authors of Pain first. Just the other three. Because I really enjoyed this show, but yeah. this segment infuriated yeah, me. Yeah, I can understand. We, Bobby Roode and Chad Gable were getting a push. Yep. 
Then that push was halted for random singles wins for Connor, mm -hmm. who seemingly hasn't won in forever. Yes. Then they come back and they beat Connor, mm -hmm. which no one really gained anything there. Then the odds about Payne cannot attack them. Yep. Who is gaining out of this? That's you, what I'm saying. I well, mean, I guess the odds of pain, I guess, all but all pain. I don't think even they're gaining from it. Like, yeah. because they're re being relegated to, like, I mean, I guess they're technically in charge. Like, they're the top dog. But they're not the top dogs no, in the no, tag no. division. The tag division, if anything, they're, like, low on the totem pole, kind of. Yeah. So it's, like, confusing as to what. I just don't get what's happening, to be honest I with you. I think they take on the Revival next. That's a face versus heel match. No, who's face? Revival. Would they're you? not faces. You don't think they're faces? The Revival are far from faces. They're really? heels. I don't know. They're man. talking about they're the old school wrestler types. Yeah. They're wearing the old. No. They 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 literally are no flips, just drop, you know, just hits or whatever. You know, they're, no, they're, they're just punches. No way. They're super heels. The only good guys in the tag people division right now are like the B team. That's what I said. People are cheering against them against the B team. That's how much they hate the B team, that's though. True, that's, that's true. That's how much they're 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 going against. They're rebelling against the B team now at this point. I do not think that okay. the, the rival are considered faces. It seems to me like the only real face tag team we have in the division right now is. I mean, I guess Rollins and Ambrose. But are they in the tag team division? They're not I, the tag team division. I don't think so. No. I mean, they had the belts. Tag team division's a mess on Raw. Right I thought now. they had fixed it, and now it's a mess again over the last few months. It's yeah, I thought they kind of fixed it too, yeah. and now it's just like this giant. The B team really screwed everything up. Yeah, they they the they they confused everyone, and they sent the tag division into a, into a disarray, and of and I, it needs to be repaired because it's confusing right now. Yeah, it is very confusing, and they should not come back on TV for a while. Uh, Paul Heyman. He did his promo uh, announcing that Lesnar is going to be part of this whole situation. What does this mean now? I thought Homie was done. I thought he was going to focus on UFC. No, no that was, I know he this, was, this was already previously announced. So he was going to come. He's going to come back and try to get this belt. Yeah, that was how they announced Crown Jewel. Was when they said that he was going to be there. And what's he going to do? Who's he going to fight? Take lots of money and then be gone until they pay him a lot again. Who's he going to fight? No, it's a three way. It's a three way with him. The main event of Crown Jewel is Roman versus Braun versus Brock. Brock. For the title. Braun better not punch Brock on accident. <laughs> but I did think his inclusion was very random. That's what I mean. It was very random. Like, like they pushed him away. It was yeah, done. Yeah, they usually, like, they put more care into yeah. Paul Heyman's appearances. Yeah. This was really just kind of, like, thrown out there. And yeah, nobody expected it. And but it was a good promo. It was a good promo, but it was just a random. It, yeah. was like, it was just like, and then even when the Shield music hit, like, it was almost like Paul was confused and then yeah. just scurried off. Like, it was, <laughs> it was weird. I didn't, I didn't quite enjoy yeah. the, its inclusion because I didn't, I, I feel like Paul Heyman appearance is supposed to be kind of important. Yeah. And it, it, it wasn't very important. It didn't yeah. feel very important. It was just kind of like, oh, Paul's in town? Yeah, just. Give him Mike Tom to go out there for a few minutes and do yeah. something. That's how we, we need to fill time. We have three yeah, hours. Yeah, we got we got to fill we got to fill some time. Exactly. <laughs> well, There's speak. only so many DX segments that we can <laughs> reshow. Right. <laughs> uh, speaking of uh, someone involved in the triple threat match, Braun Strowman, him uh, and Dolphins and uh, uh, Drew got together and they took on the Shield yet again. Uh, do you think it was any better or different than nope, not Super a, Showdown? Not a damn bit of difference. Other than this time, Ambrose walked away from his boys in the yeah. Shield. Yeah, possibly. Po <laughs> I like that you had to tag that one on there. Yeah, Cause, possibly. Because who knows what it means, He's man. not going to. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Who knows what it means? There's no way. There's no way. Yeah. Just as, a, as a storyteller, yeah. there's no way that you're going to actually have him turn. But then what's the point? My guess, because I'm trying to think no about this, and I had no mentioned points. that I, I think they're leading towards the three-way, and we were only like five months away from WrestleMania. True. You know? I could see him. What's the shield? What? Three -way? A three -way That's my shield. guess. Is Shield three way for Reigns' title? That's my guess. <laughs> that at WrestleMania, I'm down with that. Yeah, I'm absolutely down. That's with that. That's my guess. That's what it kind of feels like they might be leading towards. Mm. And so, mm. I okay. could see Ambrose feeling like he needs to. That he's he like goes away and comes back and, and isn't turning on them necessarily, but is like, hey, I want what you have. Yeah, you need to give me a shot. Yeah. And, and then beats you know. Beats Rollins, let's say, mm -hmm. and then things start to kind of like dissension starts to happen and, and leads towards WrestleMania for the next few months or something like that. I'm down with that. I, I could see that happening. So maybe less of a turn and more of just like friendly competition that ultimately builds towards right. like serious right. beef between all of them. 
Um, okay. But I don't. I, I just don't like it being. They're just. They're pushing it too much. Yeah. They're, they're like it's so obvious. It's yeah. It's so obvious it's at this point. Something. Yeah. And I'm. I just worry that like well, everyone wants him to turn though. Yeah. And you're like clearly not gonna do it if you're saying it this much. Yeah. yeah. You know that's kind of how I feel. Um, you're overplaying the hand. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, I do like that Drew won the match. Yeah. I feel like Drew's Drew's getting that push. Drew's getting that push. He's getting real good rub from from Braun Strowman. Well, brother, at some point they're going to have to figure out this whole single situation out. Yeah. There's not enough faces for all the heels they're creating. No. So at this point, at some point, like you just said, well, heel versus heel makes no. They have no choice at this point unless you do like five or four. I mean, four or five massive heel to face turns. It doesn't make any sense. So Although know, last night they slowly started to do that, they were slowly turning people pretty out of nowhere. They were like, yeah. they, like you said, they teased Bobby Roode turning. Yeah. They had Bobby Lashley out of nowhere turn. Right, Kevin Sol- Kevin Sullivan, Kevin Owens uh, turn. So they are, it does seem like they're maybe yeah. going toward. Like they've maybe realized that they're in that bind. Yeah. And they're slowly kind of trying to like fix things a little bit. Yeah, yeah. All right, we'll see what happens. Strowman could go as well. Go, go I eventually. Hope, I hope that Strowman turns back face after this, yeah. and we get Strowman versus Drew McIntyre, because that, oh, that good, face-off that they had in this match last night yeah. made me go, oh, damn. Right. It was similar to like when uh, Cass and uh, Braun Strowman had that face-off a few years ago on Raw, mm. and you saw them both face-to-face, and you were like, Vince probably is super into those two guys. <laughs> you know, two huge behemoths, super tall, super yeah. intimidating, great look. Vince was like, WrestleMania main event. There you go. Yeah. And then Cass, things turned, and he tried. They tried to give Cass a big push, but they it did. Did, you know, fizzled out. Right. But Braun, since then, has become one of the top guys. Yeah. So, you know, um, I think the the face-off between Drew McIntyre and Braun, I'm hoping in the back that it, like, sparks something inside of some, mm. inside of Vince. Yeah. I, sh- I would say someone, but I hope it sparks something inside of Vince. <laughs> uh, and I hope that he sees that could be a money main event. Yeah, I still agree with that. And the promo ahead of time kind of teased that the uh, Strowman might be done with these two anyway. Yeah, because so. they had that moment too during the match where they got yeah. the, there was there was a lot of dissension mm-hmm. teased amongst both groups. Yeah. And I, I really am ready for Braun and Drew and Dolph to kind of go back yeah. separate ways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm i I'm ready for for whatever the next step is. Agreed. Agreed. But it, but these guys have fantastic chemistry. They so do the six guys, they all do. It's fa- those matches are so much fun to watch. I really could watch them on every Raw. They're just so much fun to watch. No, I don't want to watch them on every Raw. I'm just saying. (laughs) It's good stuff. It's a figure of speech, Ryan. Yeah, Ryan. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Jesus. Uh, all right, well, that's our breakdown of uh, Raw this week. Uh, any last words you want to say about this uh, uh, Raw? Is best one we had in months? Best one we had in months. Thank you, Saudi General Sports Authority, yeah. for your contributions to the professional wrestling industry this this month. Um, I look forward to seeing what else you provide us with. If they came and bought Wrestling Sheet from Collider, the Saudi General Sports Saudi Authority, General, and told you what to write, would you have to do it? Well, I, I mean, you'd have my, to do it. My. My my dad's Jewish, so I definitely don't think the Saudi General Sports Authority is going to be buying wrestling sheet anytime soon. And if they do, I don't think they want me to write for it. So let's hope that doesn't happen. <laughs> let's get rid of Ryan. <laughs> what is this satin? What is this satin? What is this satin? What does this mean? Oh, it is Latino. Anyway, all right, so there you go. Mexican um, and Jewish? And Jewish? No, 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 no. I don't like that. No, 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 What no, does no. that burrito taste like? Liberal Mexican Jew? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> What for TMZ? Ah. <laughs> 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 All right, anyway, that's as I said, that's our Collider, Collider Body Slam Raw recap. Ryan, tell all the fine folks where they can follow all the stuff we do. All right, well, you can watch the video of this show, youtube.com slash C slash Wrestling Sheet. That's where the recaps go. That's where news hits go, uh, different press conference videos that I'll go to. Just just random, uh, you know, other random content as well. Go check it out, youtube.com slash C slash Wrestling Sheet. Go subscribe there, like, mm-hmm. review, share, uh, watch our faces on there. Let us know how pretty we are. <laughs> uh, it helps a lot. You know, we like you know make gifts of our faces. Do whatever you want. I I, I got a f- couple good reaction shots of Roha last week. So <laughs> I, I I think I think I tagged you in it, but it was did like you? you making a funny look at me oh, where yeah. you were like, oh yeah, you did. I think I did. Just yeah, yeah. You watch YouTube. Yeah. yeah. Like, uh, but yeah, so go check out the videos there. Uh, it helps us out a lot mm-hmm. if you subscribe to the Wrestling Sheet YouTube channel. Also, if you're watching via video, hi, hello, you're one of the who's seen our face. Uh, um, go to the audio feed. It's Wrestling Sheet Radio on Podcast One, 
uh, wherever you get your iTunes feed, you know, wherever you get your podcasts from. But I think it's having some issues in some places. Yeah. I'm still working on it. Okay. So just mainly check out Podcast One, iTunes. It's there every week for sure. I'm working on the others. Uh, but there's other shows that go up there every week as well. Uh, Best of the Rest with Aaron Turner and yeah. Rachel Sam Evans. Um, there's Top Five with Kevin and James. There's lots of good content that's going on there as well. Uh, I'm trying to schedule some interviews coming up. So yeah, just just uh, make sure you guys go subscribe there. Uh, leave a rating, leave a review there as well. It really helps us out a lot. And also go follow us on social media. It's at Wrestling Sheet on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. I'm at Ryan Satin. You can check me out there if you've got anything you want to say about the show, anything you want to chime in about. Let us know. Let your comments be heard. Leave them in the comments on YouTube. Send them on social media, wherever. I want to hear what you guys think about the show. I appreciate you guys listening. I appreciate you guys watching. Uh, so, yeah, just feel free to make your voice heard. I want to hear it. There it is. Uh, you can follow me at The Roga Says on Twitter and on Instagram. And, yeah, what Ryan said, you got issues with the show, come at me. Uh, I mean, no, I'm just joking. Don't, but just be nice about it. That's all I'm saying. All right, thanks everybody for watching this week. We will talk to you tomorrow for another Collider Body Slam Smackdown recap. Uh, we love doing those here at uh, uh, on the channel. So hope you enjoy that. We'll talk to you next time on the Collider Body Slam. Pro